Hello and welcome to the Crusty Couch. I'm your host, Paul, and this is your other host. No, hey, it's me. Hi. Uh, I thought you were going to introduce me. <laughs> no, no, you're not. You're not worth it. You do it yourself. <laughs> I'm not, I don't have that kind of billing yet. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. It's on the budget. Sorry. Okay, that's fair enough. Well, uh, welcome everybody um, to the Crusty Couch, as Paul mentioned. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different with this episode. Um, as you may have noticed, we're trying to do more topic-focused things rather than just free-form podcasts, yes. which I think is a little more interesting. Um, so this week, I came up with a pretty fun idea of having a brand mascot battle royale, is what I'm calling it. As if, um, you know, what if like the M&Ms and Captain Crunch got into a fight to the death, like who would win? (laughs) (laughs) Um, So it's going to be pretty standard, you know, single elimination bracket. And I'll I'll put it up on the screen right now. Um, Paul doesn't know the, the order, the list, but I do, but I just, I just want to make it clear that I put these names into a random tournament generator and I just wrote them down. I didn't pick these entries myself. And then as soon as the the website asked me for my credit card information, I just took a screenshot, <laughs> put it in a, <laughs> I put it in a Google Sheets. <laughs> so it's gonna look a little crude, but I didn't want to pay for it. <laughs> did got you, did it actually it. ask you to pay for it? Yeah. It, so it asked me for like, it asked me for like a subscription. It was like a subscription type thing. And then it said, like, email your friends to get started on the tournament. I'm like, no, this isn't an actual tournament. I don't, <laughs> I just, I'm doing this for fun. <laughs> it's like, oh, the game can't begin until you have what, at least one other player. <laughs> so, just playing yourself. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to send you the list. There you go. Okay. So, the quick rundown of the combatants. So, the round of 16 is um, before the quarterfinals. We have 16 combatants, so we'll go round by round. So round one is the Coke Bears versus Apple and Cinnamon from Apple Jacks. <laughs> round two is Mr. Peanut Fuck versus yeah. Tony the Tiger. Mm-hmm. Round three is Pillsbury Doughboy versus the Chester Cheetah. Uh-huh. <laughs> round four is the Green Giant versus Wendy from Wendy's. <laughs> Green Giant? Who the fuck is that? The Peas. The Peas guy. He's on the... Oh, yeah, the Peas dude. <laughs> <laughs> round five is the B from Cheerios versus Snap, Crackle, and Pop. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Round six is the M&M's versus Captain Crunch. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. round, what did I say six, right? Round seven mm-hmm. is the Colonel versus Ronald McDonald. And finally, we have round eight of Mr. Monopoly versus Mr. Clean. <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. Mr. Clean's in this shit? Yeah. Dude, he's going to wipe the floor with everyone. <laughs> So I was just about to ask that, like, going going off the start of this tournament, Paul, who do you have as an early favorite to take it all? Dude, Mr. Clean all the way, dude. Are you kidding me? It's it, it, it's in the name. He's Mr. Clean. He's going to wipe the floor with everybody. Mop him up. I think the Coke Bears are going to demolish everybody. Coke Bears are, yeah, that's actually kind of scary. Very strong. They're actually, yeah, they're actually fucking polar bears. So, so with all that out of the way, let's get right into it with round number one. The Coke Bears versus Apple and Cinnamon from Applejack. No. Fuck the, yeah. The immediate challenge, Paul, is finding a scenario in which Apple Applejacks wins. <laughs> well... The Applejack Cinnamon guy, they're 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 pretty powerful in of their their own right. Okay. You know, okay. you got you got right. you got the Apple guy, right? And he's the tech. He's the tech in the in the duo. Uh-huh. He's always trying to figure out how to take on the cinnamon. Okay, so he's never the brains. Do it. Yeah, he's the brains. And cinnamon's the power. Okay. Uh-huh. Now you think about it. What if Apple had prepared for this day. He knew oh, he was shit. going up against the Coke Bears. Okay, oh, what are the shit. Coke Bears gonna do? Fucking sit there and that's it, right? <laughs> what are they gonna do? They're fucking uh, bears. They're three polar bears though. They I don't care, dude. <laughs> It'd be fucking Weenie the Pooh for all he cares. He's gonna prepare for this, make something, an electrical <laughs> fence or something. Put uh-huh. him in there, and then Cinnamon's gonna come in, and he's gonna go, oh, "Look out at me! I am the Cinnamon!" And he does his fucking pile driver on them and kills them. Okay, it's the boof. 
So what you're what you're saying here is um, Apple would be the equivalent of Batman, where when people always say, "How much prep time does Batman get?" It's exactly. How much, how much prep time does Apple exactly. get? Exactly. Mm, I don't Sound know. Logic. It's three polar bears, though. All like, you need to do is find like bear mace, and we're good. See, but what if what if there is no prep time? Because if we give prep time to Apple and Cinnamon, then we have to give it to, like, you know, the other contestants. It can't just be them. Okay, if we were in a situation where we just plopped them in the gladiatorial arena with no preparation beforehand, who would win? <laughs> Ooh, if you just toss them in without knowing, the fucking bears would probably eat them up. <laughs> They'd, like, tear them apart. Yeah, it wouldn't even be close. So I guess... <laughs> They just you just hear the screams from <laughs> Cinnamon and the Apple. Help me, that... Apple. <laughs> Help me, Apple. They're taking my cinnamon. And then Whoosh. Apple would just be hopeless because it's the first thing that gets ripped off are his legs. Yep. <laughs> He's just sitting there watching his friend get torn apart by three bears. Because oh. polar bears don't fuck around, bro. They they oh, take they, a while they, to eat you. Fucking yeah, they will rip them in half. See mm-hmm. Cinnamon's just a cinnamon stick, so <laughs> They're gonna tear him. <laughs> like the the worst damage he's gonna do is maybe make them sneeze after he after they eat him. Oh, dude, what if that's how they win? Cinnamon is the uh, is the sacrifice. He lets it himself is... be eaten. He's mm-hmm. so much cinnamon that the the cho- the the bears choke on him and die. You think that his blood is just so rich that they just it's... immediately get diabetes and die? Yeah, it's just so rich. It's full of cinnamon. He is cinnamon. He like he literally is the the thing of cinnamon. Mm-hmm. All right, let me see. Okay, Paul, if I'm gonna look up, can polar bears eat cinnamon? And if it says it's oh, bad for shit. them, if it's if it says it's bad for them, then they win. If, yeah, and if there's nothing on that, just look up like what something similar, like a dog. What happens when dogs eat cinnamon? Is that how much we're moving the goalpost? <laughs> no, the goalpost is just really wide. Can That's bears all. have cinnamon? It's just there's a there's a a species of bear called cinnamon bear. And that's not what I'm asking. <laughs> All right, okay, fine. We'll do. Can dogs eat cinnamon? This is the going to be the most bullshit victory. So it's not recommended. It can give dogs severe diarrhea. There you go. So <laughs> apple and cinnamon the, win. Severe diarrhea to the Coke bears. They die by dysentery. So then who wins? Because then they eat cinnamon. Does Apple survive? Apple I'm, survives. I'm saying apples. Okay, so for round two, it's just Apple. Cinnamon is dead. <laughs> it's just Apple. Well, how many Coke bears are we talking about? So the Coke bears are three. There's three Coke bears. Oh, okay. I, I think the Coke bears still win then. Because <laughs> one one bear would, would eat cinnamon. And uh-huh. he'd probably shit his guts. But then there'd be like two other bears that would just rip open apple and be done with it. We'll say that there's two Coke bears remaining. <laughs> sure. Okay. So the Coke, I still, yeah, the Coke bears take this one. It's It was a real close one. <laughs> well, it much, was neck and neck. Much closer than I originally ever gave it credit for. <laughs> but we have the Coke bears advancing to round two. Um, well, the quarterfinals, I mean. So round two mm. is Mr. Give me your Peanut. Best, give me your best Coke Bear roar. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Okay, that was good. <laughs> that was good. Okay, so round two is Mr. Peanut versus Tony the Tiger. <laughs> oh, shit. Mr. Peanut's in this, dude? Oh, yeah, dude. Mr. Peanut's in this for sure. He's yeah, in this Mr. for the long haul. Mr. Peanut... Definitely has a gun in his cane. Okay. He's just gonna yeah. whip it out. You think so? You think he just has a he just has a fucking Glock? Yeah, no, it's like one of those gun canes. You ever see those? Like yeah, that gangsters yeah. use? <laughs> Gangster. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, Mr. Pina definitely has that shit. Look at him. He does have kind of a ranged weapon. Yeah, plus that. You could just fucking whack the shit out of Tony he, the Tiger. He can keep Tony at a distance. Let me see. Can we look up Yeah? Mr. Peanut height. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. How tall is are these guys? Oh my God, Mr. Peanut is seven and a half feet tall. Oh my, he's a giant. All right, how <laughs> tall is Tony? 
Tony the Tiger height is approximately six feet three inches. Holy he's a, shit. He's a fucking small dude compared dude, to wait. Mr. Peanut. Oh my god, you might be right. I think Mr. Peanut could keep him at a distance, but this, this Tony t- Tony the Tiger most likely has the strength to break that cane. It's it's well Tony definitely has the speed, but he does Peanut's the got the intellect. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's where the that's where the monocle comes from. Uh, Peter, Mr. Pina definitely has the distance. He he can he can if he can keep Tony the Tiger at arm's length, I think this is Mr. Peanuts easily. Absolutely. Um, and I can see it already. Mr. Peanut holding Tony by the head. He's so tall, you know. Just yeah. holding him aside like a bully. Yeah. <laughs> Tony's trying to strike him, and then Mr. Peanut gets his cane and whacks him a couple. Yeah. And then Probably Tony the Tiger will grab that cane and break it. I, I probably gonna have it's probably gonna have it. That's okay. But it's okay. How how long how long does Mr. Peanut need to last? Because think about it. Peanuts are a great source of protein. He is a giant peanut. So he, he have probably has cardio for days. He well, has the that's longevity. A, that's a good uh that's a good observation you bring up because uh he is a peanut. Peanuts yeah. come in multiple forms. Uh huh, and you 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 are missing out on his like final form, which is peanut butter, Mister Peanut Butter. Holy right? shit! So oh. yeah, Tony can definitely chomp on Mister <laughs> Peanut. Okay, but then yeah. he turns into Mister Peanut Butter. <laughs> okay, okay, it's like a Super Saiyan transformation. Holy shit! So within the peanut, the shell is a is a softer, more formidable enemy, like like uh, mm-hmm. like Mike like Majin Buu. Yeah, you know. you're just peeling off the the layer. <laughs> Holy shit! It's to contain his power inside the shell, you see, dude. If Mister Peanut gets enough of his goop in Tony Tiger's mouth, it's over. Yeah, Tony yeah, the Tiger just, can't open. Exactly. Oh he's just got to do like a Sandman type of deal and go inside Tony the Tiger, pop him from the inside out. Holy shit. All right. I, I think I think we're in agreement here that Mr. Peanut is the definitive winner. Mr. Peanut's got to take this. And if anyone tells me that I'm wrong, false. <laughs> Damn. I, I thought that Tony the Tiger was going to go far in this tournament, but you fucking... You proved me wrong. All right. Do, so you not, do you not agree with me? I definitely agree with you. You brought up some great points. You, thank you, you thank you. Got some great points, my friend. Tony, Tony's there, but he's just one physical entity. Yeah, he's just, he's just a tiger that could only do so much. It's true. And once they tire peanut. out, like, Whew. I mean, he's up against a seven foot tall a peanut. Seven foot tall peanut. There's no yeah. way. Yeah, absolutely not. I think I think looking up the height really made the difference. I would have given this to Tony the Tiger earlier. Um, but once I looked up his height, I was like, okay, there's no way. Yeah, if Mr. Peanut was like fucking two feet tall, then yeah, I, yeah. Tony would have easily taken this. He could, he could eat that much peanut butter. That wouldn't, yeah. that wouldn't matter. But uh, could you eat seven feet worth, seven feet worth of peanut butter? I don't think I, so. I couldn't even eat seven inches worth of peanut butter. It was at this point where tragedy struck our heroes, where the Discord bot that we used to record this podcast, Craig, decided to not record the entirety of the second round for some reason. The matchup was supposed to be Chester Cheetah versus the Pillsbury Doughboy. Instead, for you brave listeners out there, we have lovingly recreated how we think the battle would go. It ain't easy being cheesy. Oh boy, what a swell day. Dangerously cheesy. I'm only gonna show you a fraction of my power. What are you? What are you doing? Oh my God! I'm burning. Oh God! Other white abuse forsaken me. Oh jeez! Oh my God! Whoops! I think I overcooked the bread. If Chester Cheetah was an ordinary cheetah, he would lose. But because he can breathe fire, I think that this is probably the easiest one, and, and it's Chester Cheetah. That was fast. Yeah, that was yeah. actually a fast one. I think, yeah, that would be an easy shut case. All right. Oh, so yeah, round absolutely. four, we have the Green Giant versus Wendy from Wendy's. Um, I think oh, this one. shit. That's probably the Green Giant. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, let's see here. So Plus, Wendy's got something up her fucking dress that we don't know about. <laughs> I don't know. Does she? Let me Turns see. out Wendy's 
like an assassin. She has guns under her dress. Wendy's pack. And what if she had like a frosty in her pocket? Would that make Oh, a yeah. You know, no, you're right. This is the entirety of Wendy's. So it's like, what what could she use at her disposal? She has like a, she has like a French fry cannons or something. Mm-hmm. French fry cannons. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter because, you know, it's. The green giant is a giant. He's like fifty feet tall. Yeah, unless unless she's able to like fry the giant somehow. Is it easy to fry a vegetable? Because he's made of like green and vegetable. Oh, he's just made of vegetables. I think so. I think he's made of like peas. I think that's his whole thing. I mean, he's a green guy, so you'd assume he's like a vegetable man. But <clears throat> I'm sure Wendy could figure out something to to counter him. But in how much time? How much time, though? Because he, he could just like squish her, and that's it. Hmm. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm looking up the Wendy's uh, uh, store right now, and there's different <laughs> kinds of things that they have in their kitchen <laughs> okay. that she would probably have. Okay. 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 <laughs> like there's what, an arsenal. Guys? There's an arsenal of things that they have in their kitchen. They got the they got the grill. <laughs> yeah. It comes. With like spatulas and stuff, so they got the uh, the the fry cooking area. See, but so, here's here's how that would go, Paul. She would pull out the the stove and be like, "Where's the gas outlet?" and then get stopped. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she creates a portable one, dude. Oh, get it. Well, what you're doing? She's, you're got doing... A, she's got like a portable like fryer backpack on right now. Okay, <laughs> you're doing the the whole Batman prep time thing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't, you're not convincing me. I think the Green Giant just takes this so easily. Oh my god, She's, she could be agile. I mean, Jack's Jack's being a giant before, you know, Jack and the Beanstalk. Wendy could do it. Yeah, but I mean, didn't Jack have to like also? Trick? Trick? There's a lot of fucking Wendy's like R34 shit down here. Oh yeah, the- dude. Oh yeah. I just you're, looked up Wendy's and there's like tons of like anime. You're you're in a stuff. real uh rabbit hole with that one. Yeah, I was I looked up Wendy's too and then I realized how much of a mistake that was when I clicked on images. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. I don't know. I, I think the green giant wins this pretty easily. Yeah. Uh, all right. With no with no preparation, okay. Sure. <laughs> in a gladiatorial like arena, um, I think the green giant takes this. I'm sorry to all you Wendy's fans out there. But um, we have to be impartial because this is a definitive list of who would win. To make sure I don't know, here. man. I mean, just look at the Wendy symbol, dude. She's a smug bitch. She's got <laughs> she's got something up her fucking sleeves. There's no way. I you know I agree with you. If she was in any other bracket, she might have won. But this is the Green Giant. All right, all right. To be yeah, okay, fine, fine. Just to be in the fairness of the tournament, yes. <laughs> she was caught with her pants down. Against oh, the fucking giant, uh-huh. she she lost. All right, <clears throat> all right. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry, Paul. I know you you sound really disappointed that Wendy's lost, but I I don't think she was gonna pull that one out. <laughs> she could have taken this, dude. <laughs> okay. Um. Round number five, we have the B from Cheerios. I'm sure he has a name. I just don't know it. Versus Snap, Crackle, and Pop from uh, Rice Krispies. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think Snap, Snap, Crackle, Pop would just gangbang him, dude. So. <laughs> they do outnumber him, but he is a giant bee, and he has that honeycomb weapon. He mm. has like that staff. That's true. Oh yeah, I like controls, honey. Yeah, let me yeah. see. Do Snap, Crackle, and Pop have any uh, weapons? Oh, um, I think Crackle, the blue one. Yeah, he has a giant spoon. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, spoon. he has a giant spoon he could use. Or, uh, you know, it's got its stinger. It's got the staff that can control honey. See, but that's a one-time use kind of thing. The the, the stinger. stinger. If once he uses that, he, he uses that as a last resort. And he's fucked after. He's dead. Because he's just a regular honeybee. It's not like he's yeah. a wasp or something. And that honeycomb thing, I'm I'm assuming it'll break after, like, a couple uses like him it, it, it colliding with a spoon will probably break it before it breaks the spoon mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. unless it's like a hard candy type thing this is a tough one i think this is the toughest one 
Hmm. Be- Snap, Crackle, and Pop definitely have the numbers advantage, though. <clears throat> they got the numbers advantage, but they're they're twinks. Let's be real. You know? <laughs> and the hun- the bee from Cheerios has the advantage of flight. He's got oh, fucking, shit, he he got fly, fucking distance over these people. That's that is true, dude. That is very true. Okay, you know what? You convinced me. I think the bee. I'm leaning more towards the bee. Hold on, hold on. There's there's a fictional character's wiki. I want to see. <laughs> okay. I, I want to see if he has any specific powers. Um. The what's his name? Oh, his name is his name is Buzz, the Honey Nut Cheerios. Bee. Buzz. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Hold on. I'll, I'll just read some of them from you. So we found. Um. I found a, uh, I found a link here. It was, it's a deviant art post about mm-hmm. how about why the buzz from the Cheerios should be in the show Death Battle on YouTube. I don't know if, if you guys never heard of it. It's where they make two fictional characters fight each other. Um, <clears throat> and they list like their feats of strength and their abilities and stuff. And this does this for the for the B for Buzz. So you ready? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So, so under strength, it's held open Shrek's mouth. <laughs> Can carry a box of Cheerios despite it being many times larger than him. Mm-hmm. Speed. So for feats of strength for speed, he can keep up with Sonic the Hedgehog for a brief moment. What does that mean? Like, I can keep up with Sonic the Hedgehog for a brief moment. <laughs> then when he starts when, running, when did he over, ever do that? <clears throat> There's a commercial of it. He can dodge bullets fired from a revolver. He can ca- <laughs> Is that in a commercial? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where this is getting this from. Where are your sources, Stewie Griffin 2 on DeviantArt? This is a tough one, honestly, because you're you're right, where Snap and Pop wouldn't really put up much of a fight. I think it would be more between Crackle versus Buzz, because Crackle has the spoon. <sighs> oh, man. So the numbers advantage wouldn't really do them that well. And Buzz has the advantage of flight. I'm leaning more towards Buzz, honestly. I'm still thinking one. that the bee is going to take this one too. Yeah. 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 I think this is a pretty definitive choice. If if the bee couldn't fly um, or if the other two maybe had weapons, then it would have been different. But Snap, Crackle, and Pop, they just seem like pushovers <laughs> aside from yeah. their spoon. Yeah. Uh, they, got, they got one spoonful and that's a... <laughs> yeah they get a good they get a good uh like gouge on him like they take off his arm or something i don't know but i think buzz takes this <clears throat> all, right, all right yeah let's give it to the b from yeah. cheerios buzz from cheerios Fuck he, it, bro. He, the bees need yeah. a dub yeah he, he needs a dub he made uh he made a uh, snap crackle and pop his bitches and true all right so we have the m m's you versus. really f- filled their Cheerios, you know what I'm saying? He waited all this time for that. That's yes. <laughs> that's what you stayed silent for. <laughs> <laughs> so for round six, we have the M and M's versus Captain Crunch. So oh, dude, the M and M's. Well, how many? How many M and M's? Because it's a big, it's a big family now. When like it you- says yeah, when it says the M and M's, I think of like the main group, you know. <laughs> red yellow green and brown blue, blue. so yeah, yeah there's there's the orange red yellow green blue and brown m&ms those are the main canon m&ms okay there you go the main ones but captain crunch and- has a gun <laughs> <laughs> what? no he does not he's a captain why wouldn't he have a gun he's a captain pirate crunch I'm going to look this up right now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to look up. Does Captain Crunch have a gun? <laughs> <laughs> Captain Crunch gun. So, oh, he does. He does. He does have a fucking gun. It looks like a cannon. <clears throat> He's got like a little arm cannon, like a hand yeah. cannon. No. Yeah. So we're assuming oh, that this thing is like a single shot, though. Like before he has to reload it type thing. Oh, yeah, probably. It's probably like a musket thing. Yeah, so he could take out like one of the MS before they all overwhelm him. Hmm. Yeah, because I think the I think just going against the gang of MMs, like they're gonna fuck him up. <laughs> they're gonna fucking curb stop him. Yeah. 
Unless the M and M's are tiny, but they don't look tiny. So no, because we're going, we'll, we're going based off the logic of the Christmas commercial that airs every fucking year, where they see Santa. They're like the same size as Santa. Yeah, they like the same size. Let's see. I'm gonna double check. Uh, we're we're credible on this show, man. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta make sure, man. <clears throat> There's no stolen valor in this tournament Dude. bracket. If anything, the green one would su- would seduce the Captain Crunch. And then the other ones would just like pop him in the back of the head while they're while they're uh, while he's getting seduced. That's a good point. The green and the brown one could work on him because the the brown one's a naked Eminem. Harba, harba. Uh, it doesn't really say. I can't find their height. I cannot find their height. I found the Eminem's Christmas commercial, and they are mm-hmm. a, a wee bit smaller than Santa. He, they go up to about his knees. To so, his knees. Yeah. So they're like a couple feet tall, like two or three. Yeah, that's safe to say like two or three feet tall. I don't know if it changes the tide of battle, but I still think that they can just overwhelm Captain Crunch. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, how, how tall is Captain Crunch? In the lore, he's about five, <laughs> five feet, five feet, five inches. In the lore. Okay, so let's do a comparison here. How tall is Santa Claus? So, so Santa Claus is six feet tall. Okay, so so five five. There wouldn't be that much of a height difference between Captain Crunch and the M and M. Yeah, maybe like two feet. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. The, the, the fucking M and M's could definitely beat beat his ass. <laughs> so, so let's say like they're in the gladiatorial arena, right? Because the mm-hmm. we're making the M and M's op here. They're gonna win this whole thing just based off their numbers alone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So let's say he he takes out his flintlock pistol and he just fucking blows up one of them like immediately and then they overpower him and then, <laughs> and then they kill him. That's so pretty he, crazy. But wait a second, him. wait a second. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at another wiki page for the Captain Crunch, mm-hmm. and he was also uh, nominated to be on that Death Battle show. So <laughs> they did their research here. <laughs> okay. And this man has actually quite a list of feats. He can do a lot of things. Uh-huh. He he was able to uh, to carry a cannon, which you know they're they're about that's, like that's pretty heavy. They're pretty damn heavy cannons. Yeah, uh, like over a you know a thousand pounds is one cannon. So okay. that that's that's pretty that's pretty gnarly. He can carry that all by himself. He's so fast he could dodge arrows. Okay, that's pretty fast. Mm-hmm. He was, uh, he's pretty durable. He's been squashed by a, an elephant, came out unscathed. Holy he's, uh, shit. Yeah, he's been, uh, st- <clears throat> he's been shot by arrows, no problem, struck by lightning. He's been in space. Yeah, he's been, he's done a lot. He's been in the center of the earth. Of <laughs> <laughs> uh, the center of the earth? Holy shit. If he could withstand that, okay, well. Damn, in that case, that kind of changes the tides of the battle, doesn't it? Yeah, it definitely does. Apparently, he does. He knows magic. Apparently, because the M and M's simply, even if they did overpower him, they wouldn't be able to keep him off the ground. It's like that scene in this the Matrix, the second Matrix, when all the Smiths overpower Neo and he just pushes them all off. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what Captain Crunch would do, but with the M and M's. Oh yeah. Okay, that kind of changes things. There's many variations of Captain Crunch. Like he, there's a ton of cereals out there. You got, you got uh, uh, the original. You got Captain Crunch berries, mm-hmm. peanut butter crunch, mm-hmm. punch crunch, so choco crunch. For the sake of our sanity, let's just keep it with uh, the one Ken character. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. No, none of his variations. Huh? No, none of his, we're not doing a into the crunch over us here. We're just. <laughs> <laughs> we're just keeping we're just keeping it here but those feats of strength you've listed are pretty pretty impressive so i yeah, want to let's bring this up so he he could pretty easily defeat all the other m&ms but what about the yellow m&m because that's the peanut m&m he has a very hard interior you know Dude, like that's true yeah like the peanut m&m has the brute strength he's dumb but he has the brute strength you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but something else you need to consider is the M and M's have fleshy arms and legs. They're not mm-hmm. made of chocolate. They're just made of like 
what looks like human skin, which is pretty cursed, but it's what, it's what it is. <laughs> They're hybrids. Yeah. So that's got to be a disadvantage up against Captain Crunch. He knows how to break an arm. Yeah, that's pretty true. Hmm. I mean, if if the yellow M&M is the equivalent of <clears throat> the Hulk from the Avengers. <laughs> it's quite the then, comparison. <laughs> then maybe they have something common. Jeez, that is not, I did not expect you to make that comparison. I don't know why. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, the comparison of, like, I don't know, like Hulk Hogan or something. Why would it be Hulk Hogan? I don't know. Why would it be the Hulk? Because he's um, tough. Yeah, but he's, like, three feet tall. The mini Hulk. Well, I guess if that's the case. See, but what if Captain Crunch just takes him out first? What if he just shoots him in the fucking face? Well, you can't really beat a gun. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to beat a gun. <laughs> He's got his one lock pistol, so it's like, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm gonna give this one to Captain Crunch. Yeah, I want to give it to Captain Crunch. I think too. I think he wins this. Yeah, it's it's pretty hard to imagine a world in which the M and M's win. Mm, yeah. Only only other way is the green M M&M and M seduces him, and they kill him uh, without him noticing. But that's I that's a long shot. I don't know, Captain Crunch. I'm sure. He's been on his ship for years with no maiden. I don't think he'll mind, you know, not getting seduced by the M M&M. and M. You think he'll be like any holes a goal, and then he'll just. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, that is a way that they can. That is a way that they can win, definitely. But again, like even if they do sneak up on him, he's so durable that what are they going to do to him? Motherfucker got crushed by yeah. an elephant. <laughs> yeah, mostly he have some sort of weapon, but I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. Not, not that I know. I don't. I don't think the M and M's have like I, something in their arsenal. Yeah, I don't. I don't follow the deep M and M's lore, so I wouldn't know. But yeah. um, we'll just go. We'll just move on to round number seven with the Colonel versus Ronald McDonald. I want to say Ronald McDonald would win. Why do you say that? So yeah. he's one crazy motherfucker. <laughs> he's got the. He's got the element of surprise. Is that what you're saying? He's the wild card. Mm-hmm. He's literally the Joker, but for fast food. So, <laughs> doesn't Ronald McDonald have like a hammer? Yeah, he's got a bunch of shit. There is actual lore for Ronald McDonald. Unironically, he, he he's had a show before, so you can look it up. Yeah, he. Oh, I could have sworn had Ronald McDonald has like he has like a weapon. I know that. Let me see. He has he has a bunch of stuff. He's he he knows how to fly rocket ships. He can do all this sorts of stuff. What the fuck? <laughs> but so can the colonel. The colonel's fucking what? ripped. What? Oh, are you talking about dating sim colonel? That's not Some fair. Stupid sexy colonel. No. Okay. All right. Fine. Yeah, we'll say that's. I mean, fine. it still doesn't. It still doesn't matter. If Ronald McDonald is like. Wait, does <sighs> Ronald McDonald have his gang with him? No. 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 no okay. But, uh, He's flying this solo. Is just Ronald McDonald, yeah. <clears throat> He's flying solo this time. I feel like he does have weapons. I'm pretty sure Ronald McDonald has some stuff. Yeah, let me see. He's beaten the the Hamburglar multiple times. Like that's he's, pretty impressive. Okay, he's he's super fast. Mm-hmm. He's really fast. He um oh he has the McNuggets superheroes in his pocket. Holy really? shit! Yeah, this changes so, things. Oh, so he has a he has a whole gang in his pocket. You could just yeah, summon at any point. At any point, and he has a shadow that can move. With oh him. shit, he has a doppelganger. He has a fucking shadow. That's yeah. He has a doppelganger shadow. Holy fuck! This changes things. What the? F- See, so you're telling me he's Dante from Devil May Cry? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah he would be uh holy shit <clears throat> i don't know dude <sighs> this is rough i'm telling you i uh, mean let me, let me see let me see what else um what the colonel can do <sighs> what the colonel I mean, he, i'm gonna he be can... honest there's not a what? whole lot for the not colonel, a whole lot on the colonel no I mean, he's got to have some sort of like workout regimen to be that buff, you know. Sure, he's revved, but take, but guess what? Hmm. Um, he, uh, Ronald McDonald, has an endless supply of McDonald's. Like that, that's one of his powers. He can endlessly shoot out McDonald's. Oh shit! So he just gets the colonel nice and fat, clogs all his arteries. It's fucking over. 
Dude, and the oh, dude, does that mean he can summon pink slime too? Oh my god, he can, dude. He could just suffocate him with pink slime. It's over. <laughs> oh, McDonald's <laughs> just got a whole arsenal of burger-related things. Yeah, yeah, he does. That's that's one of his powers, and he he he'll teleport behind him, right? Grab him mm-hmm. from behind, and just goes. Looks like our ice cream machine is working, and then stick his hand in his mouth and just fucking kill him with ice cream. <laughs> He he's gonna make flurry his ass. Yeah, there you go. I, I I think I think that Ronald McDonald take this pretty easily. <clears throat> okay, can one of, can his like fatality be that he like he drags the colonel into like a ball pit? And yeah, he, he like tears him up. It it, it it becomes like the Friday Friday uh uh shit. It becomes <laughs> a uh, the first movie of a night on Elm Street. You know, mm-hmm. when when they pull him into the bed and then blood oh, splurts the up. Blood <laughs> splurts out, yeah. Yeah, but but it's with the ball pit instead. <laughs> hey, there you go. All right, that's his fatality. Write it down, okay. Mortal Kombat people, for when you add um, Ronald McDonald to your roster. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, round number eight, before we proceed to the quarterfinals, is Mr. Monopoly versus Mr. Clean. I'm going to still put my money on Mr. Clean for this one. See, but Mr. Monopoly is rich. That's his big advantage. What can he do with all his money? Nothing, because he's in a gladiatorial arena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. He's just going to be there. He's going he's gonna to try and bribe Mr. Clean, but Mr. Clean isn't in it for the money. Yeah, He just wants to make sure everything is clean. Holy and, shit. And there's one piece of dirt that he's got to clean up right in front of him. Oh, my God. And the that's hardest. The, the greedy businessman, Mr. Monopoly. Exactly. Holy a terrible shit. stain on society that he's got to clean is, up. This is literally like society, the fight, where it's like the working class man versus the fat cat billionaire. Holy there shit. Yeah, go. so Mr. Clean just wins this easily. Mr. Not only that, Mr. Clean's got like an arsenal of cleaning supplies that will just, you know, tear up anything. So you think he can like brew up a concoction and throw it as like a poison bomb? Oh yeah, dude. Holy shit! Absolutely. And then he he like forces he like forces Mr. M- Mr. Monopoly to drink bleach or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's gonna force him to drink bleach. He's gonna stick it down his throat. He goes, "You're used to stuffing your fucking face," and then he's. I just shoved that shit in there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that was an easy one. I thought this one was going to be closer, but... Uh, no, no, no. Mr. Clean definitely takes that. No problem. No man can't, can't, can't handle it. <laughs> is this is this super intense bracket putting you to sleep, Paul? Is that, is that what's going on here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. I'm, I'm a little tired. Yeah, you had a long day, Mr. Paul. <clears throat> long day. All right, so let's move on to the quarterfinals. Mm-hmm. Um, the round of the round of uh, eight, as some of you people who like football might say. Um, so we have the Coke Bears versus Mr. Peanut. So to keep in mind, there's only two Coke Bears left. The third one died from shitting his guts out. Yeah, <laughs> after eating cinnamon. Wait, so is Mr. Peanut back in his shell form, or is he still peanut butter? No, he's he's back in his shell form. He had some time to recover. I think the Coke Bears take this, man. Why? Why do you say that? Because they could just kind of split him in half. Like, there's no way Mr. Peanut could cover his flanks. You know, both of his flanks with that cane he has. Well, what about his peanut butter form? See, this is. I think the Coke Bears, like one of them, would die just for me, unless they both eat him. But then who wins? <laughs> if they both eat him, to there isn't to like. They completely eat them. I mean, I think it, it could be possible because, you know, bears eat a fuckload, but. That's true. And it's two bears splitting the load. Yeah, exactly. It's two bears. Mm. Can they eat seven feet's worth of peanut butter, though? So how much, like, how much do you think that would weigh? Like a seven foot tall can of peanut butter. How much would that weigh? <laughs> seven foot tall can of peanut butter. <laughs> Uh, Seven foot tall. Take... All right, we're about to do some fucking math here. Hold on. Yeah, I have to pull up the. Uh, let's see, sixteen ounces. So wait, hold on. Let me make this. Let me make this a little easier for you. So I found 
a five pound bucket of creamy of creamy peanut butter. <laughs> okay. okay. It is approximately the height is six point nineteen inches. Oh shit. So there's, there'd be two and a foot. Let's just let's just round down and say there'd okay, be two so and a foot. Two and a foot. So that's ten pounds. So that would be about seventy pounds, right? If it were if it's seven feet tall. Seventy pounds of peanut butter. That's a lot. <laughs> How many pounds of food do polar bears eat in a day? That's yes. Depends on this. This is what it rides on. Okay, let me see. How much can a polar bear eat? <laughs> okay, dude, they can eat up to five hundred pounds. What the fuck in a day? Yeah, you're fucking bullshitting me. No way. Oh my god, you're right. No, it says a, a polar bear can devour up to 150 pounds of food in one sitting. <clears throat> yeah. Holy shit. Oh, so split that in half. They do that easily, and their tummy doesn't even rumble after eating them. All right, I'm giving this to the Coke bears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> 150 pounds of food in one sitting? That's fucking nuts. Animals are fucking insane, bro. They can eat a lot of shit. That's like a lot of food. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't even, how much can humans eat? Like 10 oh, pounds? Probably, yeah. Probably even less than that. Holy shit. <laughs> don't, don't fuck with polar bears. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's the lesson to learn from this, from this video is do not fuck with polar bears. All right. <laughs> I can't so, believe the Apple Cinnamon was able to take one, but fucking well, Mr. Peanut couldn't. Yeah, you know, it is what it is, man. Like, if if there was only one polar bear, maybe we could have given it to Mr. Peanut Butter, but the fact that Mr. Peanut, but the fact that there's only two is a little, I think, changes things. Yeah. All right, so round two, we have Chester Cheetah versus the Green Giant. That's pretty I think, rough. I think, once again, though, the fire has got to be a pretty big advantage for Chester Cheetah. I mean, the fire is, yeah, fire is going to be always good, but can the Giant... Squish the cheetah. Is how fast? Well, he's a cheetah. He's pretty fast. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So he, he's, he's a lot more nimble, I would say, than Wendy. Which, yeah, probably. Which is why I give him the, the nimble element. However, cheetahs can't run fast for very long. They got maybe like eight seconds in them. Mm hmm. <sighs> Sounds like an anime. What does? The the cheetah. Oh. I got eight mm. seconds to do this. <laughs> <laughs> but like the eight seconds is like ten minutes of the episode. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. He he does outspeed the green giant, and he has a huge advantage because the green giant is literally just a giant vegetable. And the fire is a pretty fucking big advantage against that. And have hmm. Yeah, that's pretty. And I want to say the cheetah gets this one, but I really need to like prove my point on how. Was it? Hmm. I I really do think it would be like a like a. I really do think it'd be kind of like a, uh, an anime moment, like a My Hero Academia moment. You ever see that show? No, I haven't seen that. <clears throat> okay, well, there's you know when something cool happens, uh -huh. they uh, play the heroic music. And then uh -huh. he he does like his big shtick or whatever. So I think it'd be the same thing here, where Chester Cheetah is getting beat up by the by the giant, can barely dodge him, and then he goes, "Okay, it's time to get smoking." Uh -huh. <laughs> and, he, and he powers up into extra extra hot or whatever. Uh, oh okay. shit! Okay. What, what this this would be like the first time that he unveils that he can go extra extra hot. Yeah, because you know? he didn't have to before with the pill. Yeah, last boy. time it was just simple going to hot Cheeto mode and and <laughs> flame flame blast the dough boy. Yeah, but now he's going to extra extra hot. The, the, yeah, this the time bag. the hot Cheeto mode wasn't enough. Oh And he shit. has to go extra extra hot. So, he so I think. His full power just this once. <laughs> yeah, just this once. He has to go all out. So I think Chester Cheetah would totally do that. But he'd be like, <laughs> he'd be like, it, it, it ain't easy being cheesy. You know, and then he would, he would turn up the heat. 
<laughs> yeah, you would turn then, up the heat on the Green Giant. Okay. Yeah, you would turn up the heat. Go extra, extra hot. And, and like, uh, it, he, he would essentially have, like, Kamehameha waves, you know? Oh, shit, of just pure fire. Yeah. Yeah, and that would just absolutely demolish the Green Giant. Okay. All right. I, I think he takes this one, too. I think that's what would happen. Yeah. IMO. All right. I agree with you. I think that Chester Cheetah would win this in a very anime-style fight. It would be close, though. It would be close. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So round three is the uh, the Cheerios B Buzz versus the M and M's. Oof. Cheerios B's versus the M and M's. Wait, did hmm. we decide that Captain Crunch won or the M and M's? I don't remember anymore. It was Captain Crunch. Yeah, okay, you're right. Yeah, we did choose. My bad. The sanctity of this tournament is fucking ruined now. <laughs> <laughs> How could they ever trust you now? Yeah, it's okay. It's Captain Crunch versus Okay, so this makes it more a lot easier for me. It's boy, they're both very fast. Mm-hmm. And Captain Crunch, at the very beginning of the fight, he has one shot to try to kill the Cheerios B instantly. Mm-hmm. Can he do it? Do you think he takes that? Sh- do you think he lands that shot? One precision shot at the B? Yeah. He gets, he gets one shot at it. Because then he has to reload and it takes a while. And the, he can move up to seven. The buzz can move up to 760 miles per hour. Because <clears throat> he was able to keep up with Sonic. That's what they're using. That's the metric mm-hmm. they're using. Oh, fuck, dude. Well, Oh, I don't know. I don't think Captain Crunch is that fast. He's just a pirate. <laughs> I want to say no. Because then, cause then Buzz has the distance. He can just clobber the shit out of, out of Captain Crunch. It doesn't matter how durable he is if he can't even hit the fucking bee. I mean, I'm thinking about it. Like, what, what else can, can, the, can the captain do? Because Captain doesn't have a sword, does he? Does Captain? He does. He does. He's got a sword. See, that changes things. How? Because he can kind of close the distance a little bit. It's not a very long sword, though. I mean, I just don't think Captain Crunch can can keep up with a with a bee that can go as fast as Sonic. So that's true. That's true. That's a pretty tough one. I just don't think it's probable. <clears throat> yeah, I think that Captain Crunch meets his end here. I c- I can't think of any reason why he'd win. If he lands that shot first round, he wins. But the bee is so fucking fast. I don't think it's possible. Mm-hmm. Unless uh, Captain Crunch has like superhuman aim, but that's not established. So we'll have to give this one to Buzz. Fuck. Sorry, Captain Crunch. Yeah, I, I think. <laughs> I think it does have to go to the B. We let you down. <sighs> we let you down. <laughs> I forgive you, Paul. <laughs> All right. Um, round four is Ronald McDonald versus Mr. Clean. Oh, I, fuck. I'm still rooting for my boy. I, yeah, I was going to say, I think Mr. Clean takes this too because... Mr. Clean is not only clean, but he also has a very clean diet. He could withstand, he could withstand the temptation of McDonald's because he needs to keep. <laughs> yeah, it he clean. doesn't. He don't need that garbage. You right? Yeah, and he, he can just throw like, fucking acid and run all his <laughs> <laughs> cleaning supplies. <sighs> <laughs> just fucking blind him. Yeah. I, oh man, and again, like. He has so many tools at his disposal. You're right. Like he has like that utility utility belt. He has a mop. He can keep him at a distance. I don't yeah, know, he's man. Got the mop. He's got the utility belt, the vacuum, uh, his oxyclean bombs. You know, he's got all that shit. It's true. He can. He could subdue Ronald McDonald and in a clean one on one fight. Oh, Mister Clean is winning that every day. Exactly. Every day of the fucking week. Oof. And I'm t- I'm telling you, dude. All these people, dirty. Mister Clean, gotta clean them up. Holy That's his job. They shit. call. They don't call him the. 
the the clean <clears throat> bandit for nothing. Shit, you're right. All right, I'm giving it to Mr. Clean. Because McDon- Ronald McDonald, he has like that whole living shadow thing. But it's like, I don't think it makes, I don't think it really makes that much of a difference when you have someone as clean as Mr. Clean. You know, like he emanates light. Oh, his, his, that's a good, head. that is, yeah. All he needs to do is get a reflection off the top of his head and he shines like a bright light. Yeah, and just fucking completely murders that shadow. That is true. That is true. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, I, I think Mr. Clean wins. Yeah. yeah there's, not, there's nothing Ronald McDonald can do. Despite all of his dirty tricks, Mr. Clean just going to wash him up. <laughs> Damn. All right, so we are in the semifinals, the top four. Um, and just to recap, it is Coke Bears, Chester Cheetah, Buzz the Cheerios B, and Mr. Clean, all in the top four to fight for. The Lord Emperor of the Known Universe. That's the that's the champion of this tournament. Mm-hmm. So whoever wins, we're gonna have to bow down to for eternity, probably. Um, all right. So we have the Coke Bears versus Chester Cheetah. The Coke Bears versus the Cheetah, dude. The Animal Kingdom coming I, together. I know, right? Hmm. I don't know. See, I think this is another situation where Chester Cheetah could probably take out one of them, and then he would die. Like, because again, the fire is a huge advantage, but against two bears, that's pretty tough. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty. It's pretty rough. I mean, I think the sun. Hmm. I mean, I. Yeah. Well, since it's the semifinals, d- does the arena change at all? Okay, how would you change the arena? I'm curious by this now. How would you change the arena? Well, I, w- I would think it would be based upon the uh, characters' environments, right? So okay. this one would kind of be like a frosty jungle or something. Okay. Yeah. You know? So then, how how does that how does that give any of the combatants an advantage? Like, do you think it would give Chester Cheetah a big advantage? Well, this one would be even because the polar bears thrive in the cold, but you know Chester Cheetah he, he wants to be in the jungle. Uh huh. Um, if anything, this is probably at start. It's probably disadvantageous to Chester Cheetah. Uh huh. Yeah, I would say so too. Cold. Yeah, but. I think that Chester Cheetah would have to uh, heat up again, and he would melt the uh, snow around him. So he would light that jungle ablaze with his mm-hmm. extra, extra hot flames. Mm-hmm. His Amaterasu flames, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> his black flames. He's like, I'm going to have to use my full power. <laughs> See, but then, again, I think he would only kill one. Why do you think he would just kill one? Because they would fuck him up at first. Mm-hmm. And you would have to use... Because polar bears are pretty smart. Like, they're pretty agile hunters. You know? And if they work together, especially one is... A, we're, we're ignoring the family aspect of the coke bears. The, the advantage that they have over the competition is they're a tight-knit family. Right, so they have this natural synergy, and I think that that gives them a really big advantage over Chester Cheetah, who who rides, who's so cool, he prefers to go solo. Hmm. I see. I see. Okay. All right. Fine. But you did bring up a really good point that with the black bag form, it's he's pretty fucking hard to kill. Yeah, and I know it's like a fucking, it's a super boost. So this is a tough one. He's still got that speed yeah. though. He's a fast motherfucker. Polar bears are pretty fast, but not as fast as a cheetah. No, absolutely not. So okay, I think, hmm, I think it would play out pretty. uh 
I think I, I think it would per, uh, I think it would uh, play out pretty well the way you were thinking about it. So Chester Cheetah would kill one in his extreme extreme bag form. Yeah. But then re- remember how he said like it's it's about eight seconds long, so it would probably run out by the time he kills the other one. Oh or, right. Just as about just about just before he was about to kill the second one, it runs out. And then he gets because he, he's so exhausted. Yeah, and he gets he's so tired and he gets right fucking there. murked. All right, because yep. cheetahs are pretty fragile. Yep, they're not they're not the most endurable big cats. So, unfortunately, this is where the Chester Cheetah run ends, and the Coke Bearer the Coke Bear reigns supreme. The Coke Bear. There's only they, one bear left. He's all scorched up now, though. He's out of this. No, they get like a they get like some time to rest. So he'd be fully oh, right. he'd be fully uh, powered up. But he, there's only one bear left. The first one, one died of violent diarrhea. <laughs> the second one <laughs> of being burned alive by a super saiyan cheetah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the round two of the semifinals is Buzz the Cheerios B versus Mr. Clean. Um, I think that once again, Mr. Clean has a pretty fucking big advantage. I mean, if if we were to look at his cleaning supplies and bug raid spray is part of the arsenal, he he has this in the bag. Okay, Mr. Clean. Actually, I don't even think it matters because there's been times where I where like I spray uh, I spray bugs with like with like Febreze or something and and mm-hmm. they die. So. Hmm. That's true, and Mr. Clean does. Mr. Clean does have a bug remover. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, he does. just he just got that that nifty like that nifty little utility belt, man. Mm-hmm. And it's true, right? You are right. You can't just spray ants with like a Windex, and they're they're dead, and bees and stuff. Like they can't really withstand all that chemical. Yeah. Damn. At, the, at, the, at that point, like, flight wouldn't even matter if you can just spray them. Because the buzz would need to get close to Mr. Clean to hit him with his honeycomb, right? Right, right. And at that point, Mr. Clean could just leave a trap for him or spray him or, you know, just avoid him until he can poison him. And he would be so overwhelmed by the chemicals that... Mr. Clean could just rip his ears off and then, or rip his wings off and sh- <laughs> shove that honeycomb up his ass, you know? <laughs> he just catches him in midair. Yeah, one he hand. Insect, and he smashes him to the floor. <laughs> Insect. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Shit. I think it's pretty open and shut. Because Mr. Clean, he works in the microbial world where things are ab- abnormally fast so he's mm-hmm. used to speed he's used to that yeah he's used to dirt and grime spreading quickly throughout your household a little fucking bee is no big deal to him yeah true <laughs> that's how i see it i think i think mr clean's got this <clears throat> oh, dude, that's 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 a pretty good argument <laughs> Unless he's allergic to bees. See, is he oh, allergic to bees? I don't know. I don't even know if you can even find that information anywhere. <laughs> Look it up. Is Mr. Clean allergic to bees? If he's allergic, then that's a problem. So how about we do this? <clears throat> mm-hmm. You guess how many people, like percentage-wise, are allergic to bees. And if you're close, I was literally gonna fucking look that up. If you're close, then the bee wins. So it's it, Mr. Clean's fate is in your hands. Oh shit, no! Since he's no! your boy. So all right. So the question I'm asking is, how many people will experience a severe allergic reaction to a bee sting? A percentage wise, how many percentage of humans? <clears throat> I want to say. I want to say like 15%. Is that your Wait, name? what did I say? If you're close, who wins? Uh, if, I, if I'm close, the B wins, you said. Okay, so 15%. So according to this website, it's 
approximately five to seven percent of people. So you were closer than you were further. So the B wins. <laughs> no, so I gave Mr. Clean his allergies. <laughs> yeah. So they're fighting, right? And Mr. B or Mr. Mr. Clean does manage to stun him, the B, right? He's like, oh, but an last ditch effort. The bee stings him, knowing full well that it could kill him. And it and Mr. B or Mr. Clean just goes like, <gasps> like he just swells up in hives and he fucking explodes. <laughs> <laughs> and they manage to the the tournament holders, because he won, they managed to stitch together Mr. Um, uh, Buzz back to health and he's ready to fight in the finals against the Coke Bear. Fuck. All right. So that's how that would go. Poor Mr. Clean. Yeah, you know, it, it happens. The bee allergies are a, a real epidemic in the world. All right, so we're here, Paul. This is it. The finals. The match to decide the Lord Emperor of the Known Universe. And it's... <laughs> the Coke Bear versus, versus the fucking the bee from <laughs> All right, who you got, Paul? Damn, I don't know. I want to say the bear. Yeah. <clears throat> See, here's something that we've never considered with the bears. Is mm-hmm. they have access to Coca-Cola. They have access to the bottles of Coca-Cola. Mm-hmm. And they can stand on two feet. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they can be bipedal. Yeah, they can. Definitely can. Oh, so you think he's just going to stand up and whack the bee? He could with like the blunt end of the of the Coca Cola Coca Cola bottle. God damn, that would hurt. <laughs> Look, he's gonna whack him with a Coca Cola bottle. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. And see, bears can withstand bee stings. Bears oh, get yeah. stung all the time. They get stung all the time. That's why they steal their honey and shit. They yeah. Don't care. That's that's a regular care. grizzly. Damn. Thing, this even. is a, yeah. This is a straight counter to the bee. That's true. Oh, the, no. the, the the polar bear does kind of a hard counter because it doesn't matter how fast Buzz is if he can't like if he can't do suitable enough damage to the wait, polar bear, it's not going to matter. Wait, wait, is is Buzz a a boy or a girl? B Buzz, I'm pretty sure is a boy. I'm Why? Like, because he might have a secret uh, a secret power up that we don't know about. Let me see. Honey Nut Cheerios B. Honey Nut Cheerios B. Yeah, it's uh, a, they refer to him as he. Fuck. Okay. Then never mind. I thought he was going to have like a Queen Bee mode or something, but no. Oh, shit. Like a secret a secret hidden power he could do? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, it doesn't look like it. No, nope, it does not look like it at all, my friend. Well, Damn. shit. That was just a straight counter. That's yeah. a horrible finals. See, this wouldn't have happened if Mr. Clean was up there. Well, if you had just guessed the correct percentage, then we wouldn't have had this problem. It's all my fault. <laughs> I let him down. Okay, so the Coke Bear obviously wins this one, but how do you think if Mr. Clean had won, do you think the fight would have gone any different? Because I don't think so. Fuck yeah, I would have, dude. Mr. Clean would have mopped the floor with that bear, it's dude. It's a man versus a bear. Yeah, you ever heard of man versus wild, dude? Yeah, it's like pretty much what not to do in survival scenarios. Have you seen Mr. Clean? He's ripped. He's fucking jacked. He would take on that bear barehanded. How tall is Mr. Clean? Mr. Clean is six feet. Six feet, dude. How He's tall God. is a polar bear? A polar bear standing up is eight feet tall. Jesus Christ. <laughs> And, and that, they could they could be wait no no I'm sorry a, a large male polar bear which is what remains we're assuming it's the dad polar bear is re, is remaining uh-huh. is could be ten feet tall on its hind legs holy, when it's standing up holy shit and here you have Mister Clean staring right up at him <laughs> got his fucking theme song playing in the background I was looking up at the bear. <laughs> Staring him down. That's really funny. Oh my god. 
See, I want this final to be a lot closer than it is, but like the polar bear just would like dominate. Like, I can't see yeah. anybody else in the bracket even be like, okay, so the polar bear wins. They're the grand emperor of the known universe, whatever. Mm-hmm. Who else looking back on this bracket would you say even stands a chance against the Coke bear? Maybe the green giant. The, the green giant, yeah. Yeah. See the green giant. Well, he got murked by Chester Cheetah. He got countered early on. Yeah, he got countered, unfortunately. Or I think Captain Crunch. He would have done a good job. Perhaps. I think he would have just like got a cannonball and poof, fucking shot that bear, killed it. Easy peasy. Didn't Perhaps. Yeah. See, some of the some of the hard hitters were taken out pretty early, like Tony the Tiger. Um was taken out that's just how it goes in tournaments though so if you get countered by something you lose that's just how yeah, it is it's true even if, even if you're a really strong dude there's nothing you can do if you're yeah. properly countered damn so like the the b he got so fucking far because everything that he went up against was like pretty easy to him he had the flight advantage definitely yeah, the flight advantage just wrecked yeah, and he was, was up against like kind of like humanoids weaker, the whole time. Yeah, he was against weaker dudes the whole time. Yeah, like, yeah, he did. The Coke Bear is the first time he went up against like an animal. Yeah, Before yeah. The, he had... See, when when the Coke Bears <laughs> went up against the uh, the Chester Cheetah, they they are they had some trouble there. But that's true. I think the Coke Bears had the hardest tournament run. Out of all, out of everybody, they had to go up against Apple Cinnamon, which gave them violent diarrhea. <laughs> and go up against Mister Mister Peanut, who we're just, I guess, assuming is like the Blob, where he's just, yeah, he's like the Blob. He just has this form underneath him. Then Chester Cheetah, who was kind of a sleeper OP. Then uh, the Buzz Cheerios B, which was probably their easiest match. Damn, yeah, yeah, all all hail, all hail the Coke Bears. Maybe All in an all the Coke Bears. Maybe in an alternate reality, the Green Giant would have won because he seems like the most ridiculous out of all of them. He just got countered really early on. <laughs> yeah, I think if the Green Giant just didn't fight Chester Cheetah, he would have been fine. Yeah. Damn. Ch- Chester Cheetah just with his flame breath is pretty op. That's true, but, but everything fact- else though. Yeah, everything else not great, but. The fact that he can go into like hot mode and then extra hot mode, like that's just crazy. Yeah, it's a pretty huge advantage. Yeah, Damn. That's a big huge advantage. Well, um, there we have it, folks. The definitive list, the definitive tournament bracket of who would win in the brand mascots battle royale. It is all hail the Coke Bears. Um, all hail the Coke Bears. They will now force us to drink Coca Cola, and instead of uh, UVs in the hospital, it's just going to be diabetic. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is Coke. Everything is Coke. Yeah. Um, thanks so much, guys, for listening to this episode of the Crusty Couch. If you have any suggestions or you would like to kind of throw your hat in the ring as to who you think would win this bracket, let us know in the comments because I'd be really interested to find out <laughs> Oh yeah, um, who you think would win. Because if it's not the Green Giant or the Coke Bears, it's it's a crazy out there Dude, opinion. If, the, if there's <laughs> another world tournament for the, uh, for the mascots... Mm-hmm. Count Chocula is taking the next one. Oh, dude, there was there was so many I had to leave out because I didn't want to make this video way too long. It's we're already at an hour and twenty minutes. Um, but dude, there's so yeah. many. So like, maybe we can, uh, you know, like a year or two or something or a couple months from now, we can have the Coke Bears compete in a in an all new bracket. So like they're like the winner, and then they're carrying on to the next tournament against a, a whole new slew of characters. <laughs> mm Hmm um but yeah uh thanks so much for listening to this episode guys really appreciate all the love you've been showing us it's been really great um once again you can finally find us now on apple Podcasts. still working on the spotify thing and um we have our socials in the video as always and is there anything you'd like to say to the audience paul no i i'm that was a lot of fun Mm -hmm. i didn't expect the fucking. I mean, I kind of expected the Coke Bears to win, but I didn't. 
I didn't think the B was going to get that fucking far. <laughs> God damn it. I was honestly surprised by how early Tony the Tiger got fucking murked. Um, yeah, that too. <laughs> Tony the Tiger. Mr. Pina is just, he's, he's strong. You just didn't think of it. Yeah. But um, he's got that blob advantage. Yeah, so but, next week's episode will be another pretty fun one, kind of like this. I've already thought of it. Um, we just have to get the approval from the old ball and chain over here. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we will definitely see. Uh, thank you guys again so much for listening, and we will see you guys next week. See you next week. Check us out on Apple Podcasts, and we'll see you. Don't forget to share. Goodbye. Bye.